like the DJ Wax. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's right. How you All doing? right, Bang the Dash man in the building. Much, much love, much respect, man. Thank you for joining the call. Thank you. How you doing? Where we checking in? Where we checking in from? You, your ATL? I'm in Iowa right now. I'm at my mama house. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Love the moms out there. Mm -hmm. how's, how's that weather out there in Iowa? That's cool. It's straight for October, man. Like you know, it's it's cool. You know, I I stay layered though. I stay <laughs> layered. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so do you do you got some roots to Iowa? Yeah, I'm from Des Moines. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, big shit, big shit. Um, how how long you been uh out though in the in the ATL now? Cause that's where you stay now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been in Atlanta for like thirty some years, like thirty years, probably. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For anybody not familiar, man, uh, records upon records for this man right here, legendary producer. The resume is super thick. You know what I'm saying? So, um. Did did you move that long time ago in ATL for for the for the music aspirations? Go go get it. Yeah, yep, yep. Word word word. That's right. I know. Uh, I I honestly can't think of an artist from Des Moines, Iowa. So much respect to you. <laughs> um, actually, um, T. Boz from TLC from uh Des Moines. Okay, that's right. That's right. All right. Shout out T. Boz, no doubt. You know what I mean, but. Uh, one more time again, Bangladesh hanging out, man. Uh, got a new record with uh, uh, B King, man. He rests in peace. You know what I'm saying? Um, was you guys yeah. actually able to get together um, before we passed? Um, yeah, we shot a video like three days, man, before oh. he passed away, man. Yeah, I am, was, uh, I'm was, sorry to hear. Crazy. Sorry to hear. Yeah, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just was with him. Then you know, you wake up to the 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 social media and like, bro, dead. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, we 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 losing way too many, yo. Like I said, um, we, I, I would love to add, you know, ask your opinion on that too, man, because you know, we losing a lot of uh hip hop greats, and you know, how for yourself? Like, are you, has, has any of that made you make any kind of life changes or whatever, whatever, or are you just, you know, um, this toll of the uh, of the lifestyle, uh, is taking its toll on people. Well, man, I always like, <clears throat> I have always like paid attention to my lifestyle. So I always been on a, um, a health journey, you know what I'm saying? For a while, you know what I'm saying? Like ever since I moved to Atlanta, like I stopped doing a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, I first started, I first stopped eating pork and beef. Then it just, it just escalated to like, really like nothing for real life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I got it to a point where you know I ain't really like consuming like a lot of things that I grew up consuming. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what the what his situation was though. You know what I'm saying? But um, just speculating. You know, um, definitely need to take care of yourself though. You know what I'm saying? Because you know we we like we stay up so long in the studio, and the longer you up, you know, the more you eating. You know what I'm saying? And it's like not really a good time to be eating at certain times and the things that you are consuming is just, it just, and, and, and food way different now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the purpose is to like make you unhealthy. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta really do your, your, you gotta really study it and pay attention to what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to have uh, any health scares you know what I'm saying? Like, I think the age of, of of heart attacks and strokes is like becoming um younger and younger. You know, it used to be like a 60-year-old thing. Now it's like, I know some niggas in 30s and 40s, man, they're having heart attacks and dying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah I think uh you you bring up you bring up just the studio, but let alone even tour life. Uh, yeah. you know. All just of it. Life, life. Yeah, just lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? You got to really have some discipline. Did you have a particular scenario for you where you just started to pay more attention to it? You know, like especially even if you talk about consuming oh, man, less and less know, things. I think, I think just, uh, you know, my stuff runs in the family. So, you know, my grandma passed of uh, diabetes. So, like, that first got my attention. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's really just paying attention to your your 
your family tree and the the cycle. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's really it. You know, like <clears throat> there's a few things going on in the family tree. So it's like you gotta you gotta either do better or it's just gonna be like a part of the cycle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know, I heard something the other day where it said stuff like that is not necessarily uh, hereditary. It's the habits that get passed down within the family as to why it stays yeah. in the yeah. family. You know what I mean? So. Well, salute to you, man. Salute. Like I said, we ain't gonna try to get too somber, but like I said, the yeah, idea, yeah, yeah, I you know, that. this this record got beat key on it, who was just a monster, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, yeah. He, he was um uh, he was talented, man. He was workaholic too. Yeah, no, straight up, straight up. This dude he got he got a, he got a actually, big he got a big catalog. Actually, like this wasn't even what we planned to do. I actually got him to feature on something else, but I wanted him to do something specific on the record. I had a whole nother record already done. I just needed him to do something like this little part. And he said he would do it, but he never did it. Like he kept giving me excuses and stuff. So mm. he sent me the record with this verse on it, but the verse didn't match the record that I was working on. You know what I'm saying? So I took the verse, I took what he did and made a new beat out of it. And it became the hook. So that's and that, just and, that, and that's for this record. And that's for this record yeah, look better. Record right here. That's just okay, word. It's the backstory of it though. All right, well, 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 let's go on and run it since we since we done built it up, man. We got again the legendary Bangladesh in the building. Uh this one got B King, rest in peace, and Bria. How you say the last name? Bria Biasi? Yeah, Bri Biasi. All right, word, word. Okay, yeah. check this out, y'all. Run the visual again. Rest in peace, B King. So you saying that you got an acapella that didn't match with something else you were doing, and then you created that beat out of that based on his acapella? Yeah, he actually recorded to this other song that I wanted him to do. Uh-huh. But I didn't like what he did because he didn't do what I asked him to do. He did what he wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just, as a producer, I'm just trying to make it make sense. So I didn't want to waste what he did, and I just recreated something around it. But yeah. what he did on there was just a verse, but I made it a hook on this. So like Okay, okay. Real producer shit. We talk about that a lot, yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh producers yeah. versus the beat makers, you know what I mean? So yeah, real producer shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah real producer. Nah, much respect, much respect, man. And like I said, uh for people who ain't hip, uh, I'm just gonna run through some of the some of the records. I mean, six foot seven, a milli did it on them. Uh Diva, I mean, you, the resume stick, bro. You you work with some some hella cats. You know what I'm saying? Um, wild out here, wild out here. Um, how, how did you how did you connect with the uh, how did you connect with Lil Wayne? Um, through a mutual friend, somebody I went to school with. Um, um, was working with him, so I sent I sent them beats to to give to him, and he, you know, that's that's when he picked the melody. Uh, then after that, we were, you know, we was locked in after that, but you know, there was a lot of, uh, other things that was going on after that, but, um, yeah, mutual friend, uh, connected us. Okay. And I didn't mean to cut you off right there. What was you about to say? Five time winner? Five time Grammy award. Five time Grammy winner. Got the, got the trophies five, in the case. Five of them. Five of them. Not, too many people can't say that. You know what I'm saying? Nah, for sure. For sure. That's ill. That is super ill. You know what I mean? And again, uh, furthermore, just real producer shit, man. You know what I mean? I, I yeah, dig yeah. the fact that you even saying what you're saying about that's not the vision you had for the record, so you was able to nah. make it happen in another way, you know? Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, he was giving me a lot of runaround, man. I could tell he ain't want to do what I was asking him to do, but I wish he would have did. No, no, actually, I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad it. I'm glad he, I'm, I'm glad he rebelled. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, would, I wouldn't have made this. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Super dope, man. Like I said, we got Bangladesh in the building. You know, if anybody got a question, I'm going to show some love. Uh, now would be the time. You want to raise your hand, chime in. You know what I'm saying? So uh, one time for Miss Jeannie Sweetness. Always, always nice to see you. What's happening? Yes. Hey. Pleased to meet you, Bangladesh. So Jeannie you Sweetness represent for the Caribbean. How are you? I'm, I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I got my little paper here. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. Um, 
So just a couple quick questions, right quick. So you've um, produced for Flo Millie, Conway the Machine, Erica Banks. So I want to know, in the younger generation, who do you feel got next? Who's carrying that torch right now? In the younger generation? Uh, <clears throat> there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of artists that I like. I can't really put my finger on them. I like that dude in Texas. The, uh, what's his name? Big, Big X. What's his name? Big Plug. Big yeah, X yeah, yeah. Plug. Big X like Plug, him. yeah. Yeah, I like him. Um, I think Glorilla got something going. I like how she came back and, like, got it going. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like Flo Millie. Uh. Flo J, Flo J. Yeah, I like Kodak. I like, uh, I like a lot of dudes. I like a lot of people. Uh, but I can't say this. I can't say that I listen to them all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't know an artist that like really got my attention where I actually like play. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, when I hear it, I can enjoy it, but actually, like, waiting for it to drop and, ooh, getting into it and feeling that feeling, I don't know. Not yet, not yet. Um, when you're in the lab, when you're creating, mentally, where do you go? Like, how are you able to conjure, <laughs> you know, your talent? Like, where is that coming from? I think it's just a lifestyle. Like my my production is like really like a representation of like the way I live and think and eat and dress and like everything. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's because I'm a I'm a I'm a quiet person. So like that's kind of my way of expressing myself. You know what I'm saying? So my beats be real big and simple, but like impactful and loud and like mm -hmm. got a lot of feeling and like, you know what I'm saying so it's kind of how a lot of flavoring you know what I'm saying it's kind of how I, I I would describe it but where it comes from it comes from my inspirations you know what I'm saying it's like I come from a different era so I come from the era where we used to read the credits and, and buy the CDs and the, the albums and shit so like that is more like, uh, you know, reading the credits and seeing who did what, the, the stuff that was actually touching my yeah. Um, So I would like say Timberland, um, Organized Noise. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them, but I would say like them, them in particular, you know, like I would say that's where my energy and my mm -hmm. style kind of, transformed into Bangladesh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I love it. Thank you. I um final question because I'll I'll ask some of you questions, but my final question. My 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 grandniece is literally named Amelia. And yes, they did play yeah. a <laughs> they played a Millie for yeah. her coming out for her birthday. Did you know that that song was gonna do what it does? Still what it what it's doing. Did you know? Um I knew when I made the beat, it was special. Like, I knew when I made the beat, it was special. When I heard the song that he put on it, Weezy. I didn't, I, I, it's not what I anticipated. So I didn't really like it at first. Because it's not like what I had thought about doing. So my expectations, expectations. killed the joy of me hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was expecting something else. And it wasn't like, like we come from a, a structured era. Like you had to have a hook and this and this. And he was just, mm -hmm. and, and I thought, I'm like, man, this nigga ain't got no hook on it. But then the vocal I put on there, Millie is the hook. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the hook. So I was really tripping. But to give you a backstory, before we even got to the song, before he even recorded the song, he made it an interlude on the Carter three. It was just gonna be an interlude. 
You see how your face looking? Like that's <laughs> how, that's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? Well, like he made it an interlude. Cause like I said, you know, my production is like it's a new, it's a new invention. So mm -hmm. when you hear it, you might not know what to do with it. You I think he knew it was a dope beat, but he didn't know. Like he didn't know, like he never heard this before. So it's like, I don't know. So somewhere along the way, he he made the song. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't even rapping on interlude. He had like a lot of the young dudes he had on Young Money rapping on the interlude. So we wouldn't even really have heard a million. Mm -hmm. if, but I wouldn't even have sold him the beat if it was just right. on the interlude. Right. You know what I'm saying? I would have took my heart like, nah, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I played that beat for a lot of people. Like every time, that was one of them beats that everybody liked. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. exactly how to buy the beat without knowing what artist. They just like, man, I know what's a hit. I know what's a hit. Um, I played that beat for Cassidy in studio. Cassidy, Cassidy wanted me to take the vocal out the beat. And I was like, nah. So it's like, you know, but when I made that beat, I, I intentionally wanted to give it to Wayne. You know what I'm saying? That was the intention. So I would Just never sell the beat. I would never sell the beat until I actually allowed him to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if he didn't want it, then I would have just moved forward. But I couldn't sell the beat until I actually, my plan actually like fell through. You know what I'm saying? But it worked out. And you no, know, Millie Cat turned out to be one of the biggest things yep. of Outta my here. life. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing my questions. You're welcome. Thank you for is, asking. Is, is that a part of the process, Bang, where you come up with something and you like, this would be good for this person? I, yeah. I want to reach out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm the visionary. Like, producers, we're the visionary. We have the vision. vision. You know, you get, you send your beats to people. If you just send the beat to people, like I could send, like, for example, I could want Rihanna on something, right? So I send it over there to Rock Nation or Omar or something. And they might hear, they might hear Big Sean. They be like, oh, man, we'll give this to Big Sean. I'm like, nah, man. And it's not a, like, big. I ain't, I ain't knocking Big Sean. It's just not the, it's not, it's, you're not going to make it its full potential. Like, it's important to listen to the producer because Great. we create, like, it starts with us. Like, we, I, I made it first. Like, this is, I made it first. Like, this is my invention. So let me give you the intel of where it should go or how I see it, you know what I'm saying? Or what it should do, you know what I'm saying? But people like, People that's not invested in the creativity that just play in the middle and just make they don't they don't have that feeling. They just trying to make plays the closest thing to them. And maybe Rihanna is out the reach. Maybe they sit next to Big Sean. You know what I'm saying? So I I just I just rather have made something for that specific person, not give them something that had an idea and it's just the whole vision. And if that artist just get on it, it'll go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Big Swerve, what's happening? Bangladesh, what's good? What's good? What's up, brother? One producer to another of Swerve Hits. Yo, um, great, remarkable career you've been having. You know what I'm saying? You know, your sound, you definitely came in with a, a different sound at the time where everybody's trying to figure it out. Um, we Earlier, we was talking about technology and I know you're on the cutting edge of technology and everything like that. Um, what's some of the, what's, well, a couple of questions. Well, one is, what's, what, what did you start off with? What was your, uh, at what point did you get into production and what did you start off with? What's the tools, the, the, the tools that you start off with? Uh, I started off with an NPC 2000. Um, hardware you know and i ain't on the cutting edge of technology bro i still use that 
Okay. Yeah. It's not a 2000, it's a 2000 XL now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I even got into the programs, the like pushing the, I, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I have like, I have six NPCs and the XL is my first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so you still using that to this day. So yeah. the, the Millie was all created on, on, on our NPC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dope, 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 dope. So who who are some of the people in the game that you haven't worked with you would like to uh get get in the studio with and work with? Um hmm. that I haven't worked with. Uh Nas. Mm. I would like to do a full project with Nas, you know what I'm saying? Like like him and Hit Boy did, you know. Um I feel like I could deliver that that feeling that that Illmatic had. Mm. Um, I would like to work with, uh, I would like to do more with Cardi, uh, more with Nikki. I mean, I worked with them before, but I would like to do like what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My last thing before I get up out of here, uh, what, what, what you think that the game needs right now since you know these big companies are downsizing you know artists is getting released from these labels and and, and and employees and stuff like that you know i know the producer bag ain't the same what it used to be you know every you know that the whole industry is downsizing as far as money cost and 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 i mean everybody wants to get into the music industry but the people that's been here for a long time is seeing a whole landscape of how this thing is playing out so, you know what I'm saying, what you think moving forward, you know, what does the game need? Uh, what's the new plans? What's the new changes for the future to just make that feel and stay genuine and in, 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 in where it needs to be, where we just enjoy music and it can live on. Out, well, music does outlive us, you know what I'm saying? But you got to create that that food, you know, that will last the next 10, 20 years, 30 years, you know, and beyond. Well, I think that's just it. Like that's not that's what's not happening, and I think that's that's what needs to happen. You know, um, getting into real like <clears throat> I think the internet, social media has taken away real artistry. You know, uh, people have to like artists now uh, pay attention to social media too much to where they're like following what their fans want from them instead of doing what they want to do to gain fans. You know what I'm saying? It's like the roles have reversed. It's like people go to social media and ask your fan, like, what do you want me to do? Like, what do you, and they like people chase waves and do all these things. It's like, you really not being an artist to me. Like an artist is an individual that represents what that individual does. You know what I'm saying? Not when, when, uh, I'm a piano or or uh, the African beats come out and everybody, they, people start doing all, they do that and trap come out, then they do that. Then the New York style come, then they do like, man, that's weak. That's weak. Like why everybody doing the same thing? Like they chasing, they chasing. chasing waves. Like do you, like do you, like, you know, that's, that's going to create the separation. That's going to create the fan base. Um, you would never hear Michael Jackson asking, "Yeah, we, you think I should do this or that?" Like, man, come on, man. That's where it's going wrong. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think this is a perfect time since the labels sometimes drive that that inspiration for artists to chase waves and stuff. So now that there's a downsize in the labels, it's, it's time to get back to being authentic and being original. So. All right, my brother, man. Blessings to you, man. Looking forward to hear more and more new stuff coming out, you know, from Thank you. you. Things like that. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you know, in time we'll meet. Yeah, Swear, man. Man. Peace. Big, big gem. Like I said, I, I've been trying to put into words what you just said around social media and all this other type man. of shit. And that was it. I was like, ah. Like he said it me. for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Social media, man, is like, you know, he's having a con like I see people having conversations like about 
who's better, Chris Brown or Michael Jackson, right? Or or Usher, right? And it ain't, you know, what I respect about Chris Brown is that he don't fall into the conversation. He would never say he better than Michael Jackson. But you see people like, just with a microphone and with the platform to, to talk, they'll say, Chris Brown better than him. And Chris, he can backflip and he can do this and he can do that. And it's like, <clears throat> Michael, he didn't have to backflip. Like, Michael would just stand there and look at you and bitches would die. <laughs> crying, like, crying, crying in, 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 like, in, know, in stadiums. Die. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and the, and the reason why Chris Brown doesn't have that effect is because social media. It's too many, like you, you, you can talk to these niggas. You could take pictures with these niggas. You could, you could, you be in their house, like you, you be yeah. right there with them. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't fanned out like you used to be. You know what I'm saying? So social media, man, is like really ruining a lot of things. It's, it's a gift and a curse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for sure. We we say it all the time. And like I said, it's a, we it's always a deep discussion here. It definitely was another one today. I mean, because even furthermore, you know, we're seeing artists um, almost unofficial releases. They just dropping them on their Instagram. You know what I mean? Uh, like we were just talking about that with the Yee record. You know, he gave us a little tease. You know what I'm saying? But even as of late, we saw what Cole did. We saw what Kendra did. These haven't become official releases. They just, you know what I mean? So it's like, ah, you know what I mean? But... Uh, I, I I agree with you 150,000%. And I respect, too, the idea, even of you saying you have vision for these records. So, and and, and I want to ask you, and if you choose I'm not, not to answer. Maker. I'm not a beat maker. I'm a producer. Yeah, yeah. So indeed. Like, if indeed. I was just making beats, then I wouldn't have a vision for the record. I would just make beats and send them, and, like, what happens to them happens to them. But I, like, I be con connected with these. Like, these are, like, my kid, my babies, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's important that the, 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 the plan follows through because like when, when something happens that I don't feel, it don't tend to work out, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'd be mad that I, I sold that, like, damn, y'all. You know that was going to be my next question. Has there been those moments where, like you said, you shot a record over with this, someone said, this will be good for this, okay, I'll sell it. You know what I mean? But then it becomes something that you ain't messing with. Yeah, it just, it's tough, bro. Like, it's tough being, like, an a, a envelope pusher a, and a, against the grain producer because, like, you're not doing the same things that the labels actually invest in. You know what I'm saying? So it's like rolling your dice. So in a dice game, you're going to go with the odds and shit. You're going to go with what you see works, you know what I'm saying? To get the investment, to get the, the benefit out your investment. So if I come in there with an Amelie, with a breakup, with these things that niggas ain't never did before or heard, the, the labels get resistance on this. They be like, man, I don't know about this. I don't, I don't know. I don't like this. Then it works. You know what I'm saying? So, and it and it it don't only work, it becomes classic forever. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I say. You 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 talked about being quiet and whatever, but impactful. I said five Grammy impactful. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't be saying too much. I just yeah yeah. You hear it? You know what I'm saying? You hear it? I'm really about. I really do this. Like I'm really the one of, one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, Miss DJ Gracie Grace, you still there, Ma? Yes, I am. I'm here. Um, thank you so much, you guys. Um, what's up, uh, Mr. Um, like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bangladesh. How are you doing? Uh, how you First doing? of all, um, I just want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to um to uh, dive in deep to your creative mind, of course. Okay. Um, I just, I'm gonna ask a couple questions real quick. <clears throat> I wrote it down because, you know, it's like, it's one of those um, things that sometimes as a DJ, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am DJ Gracie Grace, I'm from Washington, DC. And so um, 
Uh, yes, how are you I'm doing? I DJ a lot in the DC areas, which is very different, of course, um, in other, um, you know, areas in the world. <laughs> but um, one of my main question was, um, how do you, uh, how do the current and social issue influence your music and your lyrics um, in this, you know, in a new generation? Say it one more time. How do current and social issues influence your music and your and lyrics? Oh, um, I don't know. Like, I don't really talk. Like when I rap, you talking about when I rap? Yes, this, um, when you rap, when you're producing, um, music and and the artists that you pick, um, that you. I I, I I can't say it really um affects my creativity or I use it in my music because those are like current issues are like dating so it's like yeah like um the things is going on all around us so like social issues around the you know maybe in our community in our area how does that influence um your in your music when you're oh no what your music you design or okay. even if it does. I can't say that it does. I just be trying to make classics. Like sometimes okay. when you when you put in current issues in your music, that issue is not gonna be current all the time. So it's kind of like for a time. You know what I'm saying? So, so basically, you just go by like the beat, and then it just come out like naturally, organically, yeah, just without even thinking what's going on. Like kind of like very creative mind. Um, yeah. Are there any hidden meanings and references in your songs that you think may have gone unnoticed from from your fans and also as DJs basically. Hidden messages. Uh, yes. <laughs> like one example when you with Amelie um I know that was like 2011 and now it's 2024 no, and to that was me 2008 I mean 2008 but the, okay um 2024 and when I when I play that in DC clubs which is not about twerking it still works for me anyway and um so now um was there like from between then to now like between all the works that you've done have is there anything that you know, like you, <clears throat> any hidden meanings that we're missing out of the, the reason for when you were, you know, um, producing the song? Not, not really. I think uh, probably like the process of creating music that has samples in it, stuff that you might know where it came from type shit. Like, you know, like, the Millie, the Amelia Millie is like, uh, mm -hmm. it's a Tribe Called Quest remix. It's Fife Dog. So okay. like, if you if you want to go there, like a hidden secret, you know what I'm saying? But people don't know that. Mm -hmm. It's just so going by like. People just hear stuff and they just hear it. They don't, they don't know what like the intricate detail that goes into making something. Or where you pull something from or what triggered the inspiration for something, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And with that being said, um, which artist journey in the rap game do you admire the most and why? What artists in the rap game do I admire the most? Mm -hmm. Um journey. Which artist journey? Which artist journey? Um mm -hmm. uh, I like, uh, well, I think Kendrick Lamar is my favorite artist in, in, in rap music, you know what I'm saying? And that, okay. And just because uh, I could say like his music uh, touched my spirit where it's like, uh, it feeds, it feeds me something, you know what I'm saying? It, you can you can listen to music and just enjoy music, but like I I'm not gonna really turn your your music on unless it it actually like 
it's on it, it speaks to my frequency level. You could feel it and you could uh, it could resonate to your while you're listening to it. I agree. Like, like chill bumps. Yes. My, my, the hairs raise up on my arms and neck when I listen to it. I agree. I had to like keep rewinding him one time, <laughs> a couple of times in the car. Did you feel and that I, way? I just want to shout out. This year? My, my bad, Grace, real quick. Did oh. you feel that way even before this year, bang? I've been, yeah, I've been fucking with Kendrick forever. Hey, hey, all right, I, all right. Just checking because a lot of people are getting Why? like just hip to Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? So oh, I'm just curious. No. I'm just curious. No. <laughs> I love his bars and the meaning and the, everything that he says. Like, it make you like think twice on yeah. things and you want to like research it i'm like oh shoot yeah, you I mean, know that's, to me the way i grew up when i you know the the last generation or the you know the generation i grew up in it we we use music as a, a learning tool you know what i'm saying like it wasn't about knowing the words or what the words meant if it sounded good, like you, you want to find out what the words meant. It was like a teaching, a lesson. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. Like now, it's like when kids don't know what something is, they don't. It turns them out. Oh man, what is that? Man? I don't know what that is. They want to feel stupid. You know what I'm saying? They, <laughs> like it's cool to yeah. Be, you know what I'm saying? But now it's like, I mean, then it was like. We we got energized when we hear a rapper say a new word or something that we didn't know it was or something like we go try to figure it out. And that was like the the beauty of music, cause like it could be your twentieth listen to where you figured it out. Like, damn, that's what he oh man. It just keeps the thrill going. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I like uh. You know, Kendrick, I think he, that's to answer your question. That's like my favorite. Okay. Thank you so much for answering my questions. And I just want to shout out, I know you, you have a um, new artist on site, Dita, and um, compare from with him and all the artists that, that you, you know, like you work with, I think it's, uh, or you choose in the label are like, um, Cause I I could hear like when with his bars comparing to like other the old like from two two thousand eleven two thousand eight, it's like I don't know. I just feel like it's gonna be another thirty years for it. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. I just want to shout that out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right on, bang bang. You good on time? I'm good. I'm sorry. Okay, word. Uh, head rush, head rush. You there? Yes, sir. Right, go yes, sir. To, okay, okay. Yeah, there What's going on, family? How y'all doing? What's up, bro? What's up? What's up, man? Nice to meet you, bro. It's DJ Head West. Shout out to Midwest. Represent Strong Star Radio. Please, Word. DJ. Where you at in the Midwest? Nap, Indianapolis. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, uh, first of all, thanks for jumping on the call with us, bro. Um, second, when Gracie was asking about hidden messages, I always wondered, what made you use Gladys Knight's keys at the beginning of a Millie, but it was nowhere else in the song? Bro, I didn't even know what that was when I sampled it. I just, I like, I like emotional, I like emotions. So I like, I like up and I like to do you like this. I like mm -hmm. to keep you going. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just felt like, you know, the, the track need the intro and that, you know, I come from the era of intros leading into uh, a different beat. Right. You know what I'm saying? I come from that. So like that, was, it wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about nothing, bro. I was just doing what I felt, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, sure. I sampled it at first, but then I, I played it over. Cause I, you know, mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, like, I don't even think they noticed that sound. I don't think they noticed because I didn't have to clear that. Gotcha. Gotcha. That was smooth. <laughs> that was smooth. That was smooth. Allegedly. Bro, allegedly. Nah. Allegedly. Like I said, we, 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 we ain't recording this. You good. You good. 
if, if y'all go back and listen to it, if y'all listen hey, to hey, that hey, let's leave first, that alone. Hey, Rush, let's leave that alone. You know what I'm let's go. Leave that alone. No, <laughs> hey, no, what I'm just saying, I thought it was something yeah. else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, for real, no, bro. You are you are a genius behind the boards, man. You definitely make some dope tracks, and uh, I applaud you for being able to uh, hone in your skills and jump into the game. Like out of Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. Like Ray said it earlier in the call. When the first time somebody told me he was from Iowa, I was like, "Bro, you playing? Ain't nobody in hip hop in Iowa." But clear as day, here you are. Which leads me to my next question: What was the hip hop scene like in Iowa? before everything took off for you? Did it seem like it was a promising situation? It was like dead end and you was like, I'm gonna do it anyway? Like, how did that work out? The scene or the actual, like what I was seeing in the world? Or you talking about the scene in my city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the scene in your city. Uh, Yeah, like in Des Moines. Uh, Mm -hmm. The scene in my city, I mean, I, I feel like is an identity crisis here. So it's like, we're not representative of anything that's our own. It's like, I remember hip hop being like, whatever whatever the hot shit was, like if it was the West Coast, we was doing that. If it was the East Coast, we was doing that. So, the scene here, we didn't have an identity to own. Um, and growing up, there was like, there was like two two rappers in in the city that uh, actually made music. You know what I'm saying? That uh, one I knew, one uh, one of them, the other one, my my cousins knew. You know what I'm saying? So it was. Back then, you know, nobody did music back then. It's not like it is now. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like, because you, you had you had hardware. So ain't too many niggas got this shit. You know what I'm saying? You, right. had, you had to really have money to get this shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. It like it is now where you could just download programs. You know what I'm saying? So that's what yeah. separated the those that wanted to do it from those that don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Cause ain't nobody finna just go out and splurge on some hardware and spend bands. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So the scene here, like there was two niggas here. One I was like really into, the other one was cool. But the one that I was into, I I, I knew him. He was an older dude, but He was friends of the family, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, But I I didn't know him well enough to like study under him or be in the studio with him or nothing like that. But he did actually make it to Rap City. Okay. Like it was big for the city, you know what I'm saying? Like that nigga was on Rap City, you know what I'm saying? And he fucked, he, Corey D, he wasn't, from here, but he lived he lived here for a long time. You know what I'm saying? So Got you. it was inspirational to see him on TV. It, it kind of like let you know, like, you know, you you can possibly make it, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think that's what really drove my desire to do it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, okay. But it was like gotcha. inspirational to see him actually make it that far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you still feel that same inspiration on that you came from an era where you were stuck in between analog and digital, where you actually had to have some money and some talent to make beats? Now, all you got to do is have some information in the computer. Um, well, I just do me, man. I just focus on what I'm doing. I feel like, I feel like all that stuff is kind of like, there's always going to be new technology coming. So I feel like yes, there's, there's some things that never change. And there's right. some things that always change. I feel like hardware never change. It's never going to change. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, programming and like the digital stuff is always going to change. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I still work on hardware. 
You know what I'm saying? I use Pro Tools to record, and I might mm -hmm. record into Pro Tools. But mm -hmm. as far as like programming my beats and doing this, I just like it. I just like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes, like I did this so much, like my fingers crooked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All right. Little last question, I promise. Do you feel like sometimes you need a real drummer to come in and help you lay down drum tracks versus using your your, your uh, hardware? It depends what I'm producing. It just depends, like what the feeling is. Like you know, it it it, de it depends. It, it, if I want the live shit, if I'm doing something like that, then yeah, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that done, or I'm a I'm a program it together. You know what I'm saying? I could do all that shit myself. You know what I'm saying? But it just depends, man. Like it just depends on the on the sound and the style. Like I could I could produce anything. So, like right. If I'm doing a country song, if I'm doing an R and B song, or I'm doing at least boom bat. If I'm doing something that I hear that it needs that, then I implement. It. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. I appreciate your time and tapping it up with me, my brother. Keep up the good work, man. And Thank you, brother. Keep making them timeless tracks, man. You definitely doing what you need. You do to keep your legacy alive, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So keep it up, man. Peace. Sh shameless plug for the homie head rush there, too. He nice on the drum. So if you ever need okay, some help okay, in that okay. town, he got your back. You know what I'm saying? Right, cool. <laughs> I, I, I figured that's why he was asking me. <laughs> he said, I've been around this long enough. I got it. I got it. <laughs> um, old school. Old school. You there? What's good? What's good? Bangladesh. What's up, brother? All right, I'm an old school DJ from San Antonio. I just had a couple of quick questions, um, you know, but I, you know, give you your flowers for all the, all the beats that you've made in in the in the, pa in the past and the beats that you're still making and stuff like that. I, I, I really dig your sound, and I was just wanting to know. Uh, first of all, every time I some a lot of your songs, you open it up with the Bangladesh, and you know. Um, Where'd you get that name from? And uh, I used to think he was Indian or something, you know, because that Bangladesh, I was like, where is this Indian coming up with all these hard beats? And, and then the other question is, uh, do you know how many hits or how many beats you done made in your career? Um, first question, where I get the name Bangladesh. Okay, so, so I, First produced Ludacris. That was my first hit song. What's your fantasy? Oh, okay. So we were in a all in a in a click. You know what I'm saying? So we was moving around. Um, some of the members in the group, in the in the in the crew, would use that to describe cool stuff. Like, man, that's Bangladesh. You know? <laughs> so when we was on the road. We'll be like, man, let's take it a room, Bangladesh. <laughs> I don't know. It just came from. I don't know. It just is something we would say. And I didn't have a, a production name. I was going by my government. And I, you know, I never. I didn't prepare for that part. I wasn't thinking about that part. I was always like thinking about perfecting my craft. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't thinking about like all the extra stuff, like, ooh, what my name gonna be, or what's this, or my tag, or nothing. Like, I think that's the how the they process it now. Like young producers, they 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 have their tag, they have the the cool name before they even perfect that they they style and or they even have a style. You know what I'm saying? So I was always like trying to perfect my craft. So I didn't when I made What's Your Fantasy, it just, it happened real fast. So I, I wasn't prepared as far as having a name. So it came later. And it just, I like organic stuff, so I didn't want to force nothing. So I, like, I used to dream about it. Like, damn, bang with this, bang with this. Then like, anytime like I would play my beats for artists, they would always say, man, that's different. Man, that's different. Man, that's man. I'm gonna have to take this home and write to this. Man, I don't know. Man, that's different. So I would hear that a lot. Like they would like it, but they would they didn't know what to do with it. So 
Bangladesh, it just all made sense. Like a, it's, it's a foreign country. People say my shit different. I was foreign to the ear. Makes sense. Makes sense. The bang in it, like I, I think, I was heavy on the drums. I'm, I do a lot with the eight oh eight, bang. Uh, Bangladesh bang the best. <laughs> so it all started just making sense. Um, the second question. What was your second question? About how many uh, hits you have, or how many uh, in your arsenal, how was in your catalog? How how many songs? I mean, have you made? Like, to be honest, I don't even know, man. I don't even be counting how many hits I have. Uh, I couldn't tell you, but you can go to my website and it'll tell you. You, know what I'm <laughs> you can go to my website. Google will tell you everything nowadays. Huh? Yeah, I, I I I can't really tell you uh, off the top how many hits I have. But you know, it's in the atmosphere. All right. Well, keep on doing your thing. Uh, but, Thank you, man. But thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, I just trip like for well, all the other producers I know. They got just gigs upon gigs upon gigs of just beats in a vault too. You know what I mean? So, oh man, it's, just, it's it's bananas for you. It's so many beats nobody's heard because like that's the sh that's the the shooting in the gym part. Yeah, 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 right. You just see the game where you, like, you, you know, you see the game when you're hitting, but all the shooting in the gym, all the, all the exercise, you know what I'm saying? All the, all the, all the stuff that nobody wants or nobody even heard or maybe the timing ain't caught up yet. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, man, like, beats be so ahead of their time. It takes years for you to pull it out and people notice what it is. I can give a person a beat last year. They'll they'll call like two, three years. Oh man, you yo, you you got this. Like I did a I did a song for um mm -hmm. I did a song for uh Buster Rhymes in 2009 uh with uh Missy on it. It's called uh, Get It. It's called Get It. It's in Missy, Buster, and Kelly Rowe. You can look it up. I made that beat in 2009. He put it out in 2018. And it and it is cr it's crazy. Like it goes crazy. Like it's crazy, bro. Like I remember that. I was like, that roster alone is nuts. You know what I mean? But, you know, sometimes, man, like, things ain't ready for the, the moment. You got to you gotta wait for stuff. From a, from a creative process, because um, I know we're in the day and age, emailing beats and all that type of stuff, like, um, would you, uh, I think I know the answer, but is it always more preferable for you to get in the studio with somebody and, and vibe together? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I would rather, yeah, definitely. I like, I like to sell my energy. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't like I'm jumping around the studio, jumping, standing on table. It's just like, I can read you better to produce you better. Hell yeah. I can't like, just sending beats, you shooting in the dark. Unless, a, unless the artist requests you and really want to work with you, like, yo, I want to fuck with Bang. Then it's e it's easier to send them beats because, like, they're already open to what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? They already expect what they're going to get. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, like, I like to be in the room. I can, I can look. I already know what I'm going to play. I just want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a type of person, a producer that's going to, run through 20 beats to get to that 21 beat and you, I'm going to play the first beat you're going to be like oh shit the first two three beats you oh my god you know what I'm saying yeah that's yeah a, they say, they say everybody know producer. right in like the first 10 seconds if they fuck that's with it what right producers do. Like beat yeah, makers yeah. I've seen niggas play beats 20 beats they get to the, the 21 and it's like that's the one I'm like nigga you should have played that the first time <laughs> 
Yeah, Did so a, I, I definitely would rather be in the room with certain artists. You know what I'm saying? So that being said, did Beyonce smell good? Beyonce's everything's good about Beyonce. <laughs> 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 money good <laughs> the, the energy's good the aura's good. <laughs> good like people need to study Beyonce to be honest, be honest you know like people that want to be iconic um, I don't think like they know like I, I've had artists like new artists young artists come to me and say, I want to be like Beyonce. I want to be like Beyonce. But they don't even want to work too much. You know what I'm saying? Like they come and do that little thing and then they go. And it's like, you, you're, you'll never be. You'll never. You don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> Like you don't even know, like like I said, they don't see the shooting in the gym. They just see her on the stage. But even this, it's like these new artists can't even take constructive criticism. They don't even know how to handle anything uncomfortable. They're going to fold up. They're going to not like you no more. They're going to go to somebody that's telling them something good or something nice. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce? You see them taste where Matthew be in they ass? Get up. Y'all ain't do Oh, hell no. Yeah, uh. And Beyonce be calm. She be calm. And she turned to the turned to the Destiny Child. like, okay, we're going to do it. And go back out there and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's different, bro. That's different. That's the era I come from, like, being criticized and, and to perfection. You know what I'm saying? We grew up in the church, the choir, where the niggas be off key. Nigga, you be like, boy, them, the choir directors be going crazy on you, yo. <laughs> You see, like, even, like, James Brown days. Like, James Brown used to dock, would, would, would smack his, his musicians, nigga, if they played the wrong notes. And <laughs> dock they pay. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen the story where Dallas Austin talks about his dad? Because his dad used to play for uh, James Brown. James Brown come in the room, niggas, bro. Like, <laughs> You played the wrong note. <laughs> you, you fucking up my shit. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying smacking people. I'm just saying like yeah. that's what niggas used to put up with. Like the niggas used to stay there and take it and do it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's what made him great. That's what made him great. And that's why, like I said, I I, I respect the fact that even you talking about like your vision. You have an idea for a vision. We yeah. gonna get it there. You know what I'm saying? So I love it. I love it. I, I, I had to ask, though. I had to ask. because You know what I mean? You talk about being in the studio with Beyonce. It just look like she constantly smell good, dog. You know what I'm saying? See, you, you, you finna get canceled. <laughs> 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 you say one more thing about how Beyonce smell. <laughs> I'm, com I'm complimenting. You know what I'm saying? I'm complimenting. Let me shut up. Let me I mean, shut up. Jay-Z get a hold of this audio. <laughs> or shut your lights off. <laughs> uh, Jesse, Jesse, you there? Jesse Irby, you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, word, word, word. So, um, shout out to Bangladesh for being on the call today. Um, big fan of your uh, work and everything. And I Thank followed you. your career for years now. And the question I want to ask, let us find out something today. Um, coming from Columbus, Ohio, uh, working for Urban One here in the Columbus Market. And I just found out today that a guy from the city made Mason's welcome back, but he's not under the credits. So I know in the past you dealt with some, you know, issues with, you know, the politics of making sure your paper right, your paperwork and all that type of stuff. Um, how can artists in general, not even producers, but how can artists protect themselves and be able to gain and receive their proper notoriety in this day and age? Because, I mean, Welcome Back was, what, 2011, 12, maybe? 
So times have definitely changed, but how can artists protect themselves, you know, to make sure that they're given their credit and given their just due and not being jerked? I know the music industry, everybody says everybody gets jerked, but how can people avoid that? So, you know, like there's so many like different storylines. You never know, like, uh, I would have to have more backstory because like it's weird that somebody's name or don't get a credit. It's like, mm -hmm. what did they not do? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, did you agree to this and you're mad now? Or did they just steal your shit and you ain't got no attorney? Like, cause if right. like, <clears throat> I just don't understand this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you got to have an attorney off rip. Mm -hmm. So I can't see your beat being stolen if you have legal representation. You know what I'm saying? Right. And like, I'm still trying to figure it out to this day because he's in the video. <laughs> like, like, he's in the, like he's he in the had video. To, but... He had to agree <laughs> to something. People don't be telling you the full story, bro. They only tell mm -hmm. you some of it to m make you feel they side. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People will agree to stuff up front because they so eager to be a part of something. Then later on, something, you know, the money ran out or they ain't cool no more. Then you want to be, oh, he, he did this or they did this and da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would have to know, like, more details of these these actual events that happen because like off the rip I'm gonna tell you you need an attorney so if you got an attorney and you sending out music and a person actually uploads your shit and they running with your shit and it's out in the video and you're in the video it don't make sense mm. okay I see what you're saying I see what you're saying like it don't make sense because now you got a lawsuit. Now you got press. Now you go do, now you in 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 interviews and you're like, man, this nigga stole my shit. The person that stole your shit don't want that to happen. The artists don't want that to happen. So I can't right. see this being like a a situation where a motherfucker just I I, I just stole your beat in front of you. Hey, come get in the video. Like, come on, man. It just don't be making no sense. <laughs> I be you need right. more. You just need more storyline to know like what really happened. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so to make this, I guess in a sense, um, this is my last question. Um, in a sense of personal uh for you where you can uh give us some information about your experience. So when the situation happened with you know the cash money situation for your record and everything like that. Um, you seem to remain cool. I don't remember seeing like any tweets or anything like that. You know, I actually met you once in person at A3C. Um, one what was that like 2016, 2017, like when Wayne was there and you was just off in the crowd, just chilling by yourself. No entourage. I'm like, wait, that's Benny with this. You was over there just chilling. So you seem to be a mild man and a calm person. But in that moment, how did you hold your composure? Because obviously the game is built off relationships. So if you went off the rail or something like that, can mess up something down the road. And obviously you have success now to this day, but how were you able to uh, keep your composure in that trying time? You know what I mean? To still look forward to what's next. Um, Like what you what you mean in like the, the issues I had with cash money? That's yeah. You like, you, yeah. Cause I mean, that took a like, some time. And, and, and dealing with that. Yeah, you know, like, you know, like, how were you able to hold your head, you know what I'm saying, and still stay focused on your grind and still build out your career? That's easy, because at the end of the day, like, nothing nothing was stolen. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's, it's not a situation like you described. So what happened is that it was something that wasn't paid out. So, mm. like, it's like, Say we made some money, but you got the money. Mm -hmm. And you gave me my part yet. Okay. And then you like, 
you got the money and you looking at the money you're like man shit oh and you just in your mind you just decide to say man fuck that nigga i'm finna go shit <laughs> it was more like that it wasn't it's not okay. like a, a bad deal or something i didn't do right or mm -hmm. something that i agreed to and didn't you know it's not nothing oh, like yeah. that. It was just some oh, yeah, for sure Oh, yeah, for sure. But even in that moment, if you're old something and you know how life goes, life can go up and down. Some days have been old. Well, like you, you seem to keep your composure like, throughout that whole yeah, time. You know, like I dealt with it the way I dealt with it. And it's like those interviews I was doing actually made it, uh, actually made them pay me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But that wasn't my plan to go do interviews about. I never, I never set up an interview to go cat or bash them. It turned into right. that because, like, I be asked questions, and back then, I wasn't privy to like how journalists operate. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm like a real nigga. I'm not an industry nigga. So, if you ask me a question about something that like, if you say, man, what you think about this? And I ain't fucking with that. I'm going to be like, man, fuck them. And that's what happens. So when 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 a nick, when they hear a nigga say, fuck cash money, the journalist, that's that's trick. That's like clickbait. So they're like, yeah. oh, shit. Bang with this shit. Da -da 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 -da. And they like dismiss the whole interview and just run with this shit and it just spreads over the internet. So then mm -hmm. once it spreads over the internet, it gets to the actual niggas I was talking to or said this about. So they don't want to, they don't want this to be the, the they don't want this to be the storyline. So you, you niggas work it out. You know what I'm saying? They be like, oh man, come, come get your come, hey man, come down to my hey, come get this check. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> right. So it wasn't never like it, it's always been misconstrued. Like, I never worry about the money because like the paperwork says what it need to say. So you're gonna eventually get the money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just that like niggas was acting like I don't like it wasn't even what they were saying I was told from somebody else a big time dude in the industry a publisher that yeah they don't pay royalties he's like oh man and he said it casually like oh man don't don't worry about that because they don't even pay royalties I'm like what <coughs> hell no <nah. laughs> you know what I'm saying so, <laughs> So I, I I'm calm and just a natural calm person, you know what I'm saying? So uh being uh anything outside of who you really are is not really you're being controlled at that point, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. emotions control you. So I would I'm always calm. I think if the conversation is brought up or something, then I'm gonna express how I feel about it. But in right. today's time, like how I know how shit work now, I'm not gonna say the wrong thing for a journalist to abuse. You know what I'm saying? So gotcha. Even though I wanna say it, I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna allow them to benefit from it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that was just a moment that kind of it kind of hurt. Cause we could have did a lot more work, you know what I'm saying? Even six foot, seven foot, like that was after the internet thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, he said this, but they they working again. Oh, they still work. You know what I'm saying? We made another hit. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, I never, I didn't give six foot seven to little Wayne. Somebody else did. So I wasn't mm -hmm. even a part of it, to be honest, because like that experience just just backed me away from that. So I'm like, nah, I ain't. when I made that beat, 
I didn't know who to give that beat to. I had that beat for months because I, and I knew what it was. But I never thought about him because of that situation. So I didn't know who, like, I'm like, I just had this beat. And I was talking to somebody one day, I'm talking to this, this publisher dude. I was like, man, I got this beat, man, it's one of them. Like, oh man, send it to me, send it to me. And he's like, he's thinking like, he's telling me about T.I. needs something, this person needs something. And he sends it to the person that represents them. But this person that represents them represents Wayne too. So when he he sent it for the intentions of this person, the person he sent it to is like, no, nah, this no, this Wayne, no, oh, hey, you know what I'm saying? So that's how Wayne got six foot seven foot. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Wayne also had did it on him beat. Oh wow. Hmm. Wayne had that mm. beat before six foot seven foot. Wayne recorded that beat. Wayne felt like that was gonna be a Wayne single. And he 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 played it all, he played it all the time. He like it was gonna be one of them. You know what I'm saying? He felt like that. But then he went to jail for that year. And I just had the beat. So I was still, I would still like play it for people. I was still like going around studio playing it for people. Then one day, um, I recorded it on Game, uh, West Coast uh, Game. He killed that song. Like he made a dope. Like he made one of the best game songs I ever heard on this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I don't have it though. Oh, I was about to say like, uh... <laughs> like I don't have it. I wish I had it, but I was looking forward to that I was looking forward to him using this beat because like I've never heard game like this. I never heard us it was hard. Like it was whew, it was so hard. He didn't like so he didn't end up nothing ever came from that. I was waiting for something happening, time was going on. Then I sent it, and this is a, I guess this nigga's name is a sens sensitive subject now, but um, Diddy was like working on his project. I went to his crib, I, I gave him a CD, I played him some beats. Did it on a beat was on there. This is the time where he was managing Nicki. So when I left, I guess he played the beat for Nicki. So Nicki had the beat. And she did the song. And that's how I was working with another cash money artist. You know what I'm saying? So she asked me for the beat. And I said, I said, you know, that's Wayne's beat. And she was like, no, I talked to him. He said I can have it. He said I can use it. Then I was like, then I was like, no, you don't pay royalties. No, no, everything's straight. Everything's good. Everything's going to be fine. Everything. Like, so she was doing that. So I let her rock with it. You know what I'm saying? So when Wayne got out of jail, he was in an interview. Wayne was in an interview and he was talking about two things he mentioned in his interview. About when he was going, when he was gone away, during his time, he said one thing. He said one of his mans smashed his girl. Then he said, "I don't know how Nikki got my beat." <laughs> oh wow! So he felt like niggas was just taking from him when he was locked up. So. So I don't think Nikki ever had this conversation with him. I think she just told me that to get it. You know what I'm saying? But wow. it worked out, man. You know, like, oh, absolutely. You know, classic like, was made. Did it on him like it's really Nikki's only urban song on that first album. Mm -hmm. She had like all pop records, so 
when that mm, 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 come on like it's like that's girl that's that's female's favorite record you know what i'm saying so the factual i think i think she she uh she did a thing to it and i never had heard <laughs> what wayne did and i ain't got what game did Mm. Fire. That that's Fire. a story. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that be the music <laughs> game. It's always asked for forgiveness, not permission. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Right on. Oh, good good look, Jesse. Good look. I like the I like the sweatshirt by the way, Raider Nation. Oh, we, we still, still hey, we still we hey, still, we still, left, we still going. you already know what it is, man. We still yeah, yeah, it yeah, down. yeah, yeah. We still you know holding it down. Still it always. Right. Yeah, but uh uh, bang, let's let's run a record real quick. We got sent this one in uh, right now from you. So uh, if it's cool, we'll, we'll run this bus down. Bus down, Grammy. Yeah, we gonna run that. That's that. This is my rap shit. Okay, it's totally different from the production that you just played. This is like this is like. I love this shit. And is this gonna be on the upcoming album? My rap shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not gonna be on the album of the. The the song you just played with B King, that's something. Totally okay, different. okay, word. But this one will be. Yeah. yeah. Okay, word. Peace out, y'all. Talk your shit there, babe. Hey. Talk your I shit you. there. I love <laughs> Ooh, that's hard right there. That is hard. That I is super. How you hold the chain a little bit? I was like, yeah, he's fucking <laughs> with that shit right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah man. Real nah. shit now, nah, like the ain't no real shit going on no more. You know what I mean? It's what I say talk, talk it, talk it. <laughs> uh, so I just want to make sure we drop these details. Um, we got the album coming February, correct? Yeah. All right. Uh, the P print. Yeah, the P print definitely coming in February. All right, word. Now, is this gonna be all you rapping, or we got uh? You behind print, just yeah, P print is the um B King. Okay, the okay. P print is really like a uh a, a, a strip club, more adult type of sound, like um you know, more more P print. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh the moose knuckle. The moose knuckle. You moose know knuckle. Yeah, yeah. So my moose knuckle. <laughs> Shots yeah. to glow, really. Shots to glow, really. <laughs> uh what's up, GD? Chime in, GD. <laughs> I just wanted to know if there was anything you wanted to get off your chest. <laughs> yes, oh. <laughs> I think he said it all in that joint. I think he said it all in that joint. No, but I have, I have to ask you because you're definitely um, someone who works off of energy. And this is what I hear. And, I, and I, I'm in here 35 years. So a lot of things you're saying, I'm like, yes, yes. Um, and I'm on the executive side of things. I'm not, um, I'm, I don't. I'm not a DJ or anything, but my point, my question is a question I have not asked in so long. Have you, because I did not see it in your discography, I did not hear it in your catalog, have you ever done anything with reggae or dance hall, whether it's production or collaboration or anything? And would you be interested um, in doing none of that? Because you voice Busta and Missy. So well, that's my question. I actually like, I do, I do music like, I do rhythms, whatever rhythm is, is, necessary for the music like i really produce so if i got if i have my loop going and this and and i hear the drums doing reggae or if i hear the drums doing some dance hall that's what i do but it's never gonna be like that it's gonna have like certain elements of it but it's gonna be me it's, it's bangladesh and I'm, I'm such a like a drum drum heavy dude like my bounces my rhythms change so i could be doing rhythms that i don't even notice this is a genre of something you know what i'm saying until like oh that's this oh that's that you know what i'm saying so i do have music that has um afro beat um reggae you just ain't heard it yet. It just ain't came out yet. You know what I'm saying so. It's a it's a it's a it's a grind getting to other things, and 
these are these are inventions. So people they record them. We go in the studio and record them, but they ain't came out. I have some crazy with my. I should have played that. To be honest, I got some crazy shit with Mario that is like Afrobeatish, but it's crazy. Like nobody's doing these drums like this. And he just dropped this song called like man, it's like bro. I ain't knocking him, but this shit ain't this. You know what I'm saying? I kind of want to play it though. Hey, shoot it over, shoot it over. We run it right now. We run it right now. I don't want to play it though. You know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, say, I'm feeling like you should. I'm feeling like you should. At this we're point, not gonna right? tell. <laughs> It'll just be between us. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. Hold on. It ain't. It ain't. Yeah, me. I. I just want to give you some flowers, man, because I love how you talk about your music and talk about your creativity. I mean, like you said, beyond, you know, like I. I just think like music has got depreciated over the years that people man, just don't. It's so you know, depreciated. It's so like boring and dumbed down, and everybody's just doing the same thing. And I don't think, and and I feel like. And I'm not saying, he's here somewhere. I'm not saying that stuff is not relevant or out there. It's just that why we gotta dig for it? Why it ain't in our face like it used to be? I like when I came up, we had a variety of things just hitting you, just it's just right there. Now, if you want to hear something that is different than the red, you gotta go search for, you gotta find it. It's, it's not relevantly in your face sitting right there. Um, but there's people still doing authentic stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's just not highlighted. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're the ones who have been around, like I said, like yourself, man, 30 years. That's And I think that's the thing about it is like, even going back to how you was talking about, you know, I mean, pretty much like the day the superstar is gone because everybody got too much access to everybody. So with that being said, it's like, I, I feel like people don't put the care and the importance into the actual craft of the music anymore. Cause it's like, I don't really need the music cause I'm getting brand money over here because I got two, 3 million followers. So let me just do this part time over here. Da da da. But you know, but that's what, like I said, man, and I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say her name in, in the most respect, but that's why Beyonce is Beyonce. You know what I mean? You have had an illustrious 30 year career, you know, like Kendrick's going to be around, you know what I mean? All, all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like this, people who do this music shit for real. And I think there's a lot of people who look at it like a hustle, you know, and, and, and unfortunately right now, the people I think doing it like a hustle are the ones who are getting the most attention, which, which sucks and ass in a major way. The data proves that real music is, it stands the test of time. It sells the most. It, it proved the data proves it. Like they be trying to like, they be trying to like, 42 fake us to think that this shit don't sell or don't work. But the data proves itself. You know what I'm saying? Like you see like the two the the, the beef that just happened, right? Or the two led, you know, Kendrick, Drake. You see like the outcome of the fight. You see a nigga pop out, he ain't really sweated yet. He just like, uh, he got people behind him that just support him. He ain't, they ain't on payroll, but they'll do anything for him. You got the other, he's like, you got niggas on payroll. Then, you know, then like, you see him today, he's skinnier. You know how when you- He look, he look at a little worn in the face. He look a little worn in the face right about that. Weird, you know, it's like, you know when you lose a girlfriend and you get you skin you you you, you can't eat. <laughs> you know, it's just different, bro. Like it's 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 like it's like God against. I ain't even gonna say it. it's like God. Yeah, yeah. There's always something that trumps, bro. Like you know, it's just different. Good music stands the test of time like outcast sold 10 million albums bro 10 million 
Niggas ain't selling no albums, bro. These niggas not selling no albums. J. Cole sells out stadiums. He don't even try to make radio songs. He just, J. Cole, that was another nigga right there. He a nigga that just do him. He just do him. He don't wear chains. He ain't got no fancy shit on. Like, he he just come out when he want to. He talk about the shit he want to. He rap on the beats he want to. He tells this story about when he first got in the game and he was going to an award show. And they had a, the label had a stylist for him. And they put this shit on him. And he wasn't comfortable. And he's like, man, I don't know. And they, they forced him to do it. So he went along with it, which is you could get trapped in going along with the flow instead of doing you. And he did it that one time. Then he went to the award show. And there was another nigga with this same outfit on. Oh, damn. <laughs> So like, uh, fuck that shit. like, I'm going to just do me from here on out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I like to do that do them, man. Like, do you. Even if whatever kind of music you're doing, do you, bro. Like, do you. All right. Well, let's 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 do you a little more. We got this Mario, this Mario joint. Oh, man. This so, Mario? Yeah, yeah. We got to do this. We got to do this yeah. for you. All right. Bangladesh, rock it with us. You built this up. You built this up. Here we go. Let's see the vision. Yo, fam, that's the lead single. This nigga just put out this goofy. I ain't gonna talk about it, bro. That's the one, not the two, my dude. That's, that's the, the one. one. Yeah, that's, that's the, the one, one, not the two, my G. Uh, uh-uh, uh, run that. Yo, that's going in the Serato right now. You know what I mean? But, but, I go this is the shit I go through. I go in these, I go in these rooms, I bust, I bust them. I I, I come out with with gems and I leave and they they go and do something, they go put some goofy shit out. Like, they, like what is we doing? Like what like I thought this was the music business. Like you want the best results. I thought you, I thought you were supposed to give the best results. Like I should have, I should be employee of the month. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, me. that that record just feels like that has so much potential, Man, especially I'm again with the with the with the wave of Afrobeat and all that right now. But but it's just so different with the drums right there, bro. That's why I was trying to tell you. Yes, yes. That's that bang effect right there. That's that bang effect. That shit is all. That shit is all. Swerve, you there, Swerve? Shut me down. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit. To answer your question. <laughs> to answer your question, Jeannie. A little <laughs> something in the ball for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you got them the trips uh them kicks on a trip. You know, Man, yeah. Hey. And and I could tell, I could tell it's an NPC sound, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and all the all the, you know, certain people that know the warm sound coming from a machine, especially the older models, you know, mm. and they, they'll know, you know, the the sound. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you, um, I don't know if anyone asked you, uh, are you interested in um, teaching or have you done a master class yet? Or are you willing to, in the future, do one? Yeah, I've, I've done um, a few master classes at Patchwork Recordings in Atlanta. But I'm always open to uh, teaching. I like to, I like to, uh, I like to answer questions. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to talk. I like to ask questions. I like to give you information. You know what I'm so, oh, here's a great one. Um, are you going to um? Do you know about uh? Gosh, um, I forget what what his series is called, but he's in Atlanta. Um, 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 damn, I can't get his name right now. Uh, uh the producer. He he worked with Jeezy and everything. He got a, a episode that he do. Are you talking to- about Low? I mean, uh. Shotty Red? No, 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 no. Uh, damn, why can't get his name? Don Cannon. Oh Don, yeah, Don Cannon. Yeah, he got he got a show. Um, yeah, he got, he asked me to be on there. I, I just ain't went on there yet. Yeah, I'm. Uh, well, I 
I'm I ain't gonna ask what because I know most of the time they touch most of the uh how to the, the biggest song. I don't know if it's gonna be the Melly or one of the others. When I guess whenever you do be up there, um, you know, he, they usually go through the recreation of the beat and how did they come about with with that. And I I always watch that uh his series is is a great it's a great way of um you know getting the producers on producers that have the hits and stuff like that and displaying the, those producers out there and i love watching it and seeing the machines that they use you know i think his weapon his go-to weapon was the asrx i remember when i had that and um a couple of other people had an npc you know whether it was the asr 10 or things like that so i can't wait to you know if you definitely be on i can't wait to uh uh see that you know and you know how I'm gonna see that process i'm gonna definitely listen to you yeah, man. All right, man. I like that call. I like, you know, I like that he, he hit me about it. But what I would have loved more that he hit me about is some of that work they got over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I wouldn't I wouldn't jump into it too quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, call me about Uzi Bird or <laughs> you know, the white boy or something. Like I kind of felt the way I ain't I ain't gonna talk too much. C Styles, C Styles, what's happening? You was on mute, G. Here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. All right, all right. Bangle Jess, kudos. What's up, man. What's up brother? This is uh C Styles, uh Super Friends Coalition Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is, we hearing all this good shit right now, right? Yeah. You ain't bringing to New Music Mondays yet. What's up? Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, we've been talking about that. Me and my team been talking about. You know, you know, you know, you need to come through and highlight this us, is, man. This, we... You know, this is uh, like, I feel like that's a certain thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the first song he played, like the Beat King thing, I feel like that is New Music Monday type shit. The Beat King record and the Afro Beats record. Yeah, but see. I just really just played that for y'all. That ain't really my shit, but to be honest, I might just leak that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm leaking. Just... That's leaking. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I've, ne I've might... never been a leak. I've never been a leak. You know what I'm you saying? You might have to be a leaker. You might and have to I, be a leaker on this one, dog. I might you have might to, have to be, be you might you might have to fuck around and be I a leaker. Have on to this be one. a leak. Wait, wait, wait. Can y'all be kind of easy with the word? <laughs> That's a pause. It's like, oh, come on. That is a pause. That is a pause. See, until you said it, I wasn't even pause. thinking about that right there. Right. Nah. But yeah, but um, <laughs> you know, I might get that shit mixed to master, bro. I might, yeah, man, because sometimes you gotta force the issue with these niggas, man. They don't even be you know, you know, you know, I'm gonna rock it with you, and you know, coalition is gonna rock it with you, so. You yeah. might as well go ahead and send that my way. I got you. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm C-Style. You can hold me to anything. Everybody know yeah. me. I get down. All right, bet. Hands down. We on it. Yeah, man. Earl, Earl, did you want to chime in? Nah, my bad. Actually, um, my joint came off of me, but in general, yo, much respect to you, uh, Bangladesh. You know what I'm Thank saying? You, um, really appreciate your contributions towards music, towards hip hop, and just rhythm and whatnot in general. Um, God damn, I did have a question, but since I'm on the spot, um, you know, just hearing hearing like the evolution of your sound like over time, right? Like you've always had something that's had like to the, the earlier conversation about just quality and authenticity and that kind of being like the spine of music and that quality always like shining through. Um, I feel like you're one of the producers that have been able to stick to like an authentic sound while still pushing boundaries and still trying things that are different. Um, and it is really dope to hear that within this track of Mario. Not to ask you something like, where do you see your sound going? But just in terms of um, music that's been like catching your attention um, and, and getting you excited past like what we already know and everything that we already consume. Um, like any genres that are kind of like, not for you to give up any recipe, secret sauce, but like genres that you've been picking up. You know what I'm saying? Things that you're excited about outside of like the obvious sphere of music that we're in right now. Like, like, no, man, like <clears throat> I'm such an abroad type of thinker. Um, whatever I feel I do, but 
I don't do, I don't think genres when I produce. I don't think, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? So, like the Mario joint, like you could probably consider it Afrobeat, but that was the rhythm that the spirit told me to do. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was actually trying to make Afrobeat or nothing. And it's still like, I still do me. So it's like, I feel like it's a little, it's not really that, but it, it, anytime you have that, you know, this is going to, is going to be considered a, a certain thing, but I don't really chase waves, man. I just do me. I feel like I'm a, I'm a hit up. I'm a hit of my time. So it's like, you just got to wait for things to catch up to you. I don't, I, I feel like that's the uniqueness and the beauty of what I possess it, it don't get old. Like it doesn't get old. Like it's it's the nucleus of what it should be. Like it's 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 still inspiration. It's still it's still big. It's still like powerful. So I, I never had to like get on the wave thing. I was just talking about even even like fashion, right? You know how like fashion trends change, you know, niggas is wearing bell bottoms now. You right. Know <laughs> so it's like I hear people say like fashion forward. Like I'm in the fashion forward. And when they say that, it's like whatever is going on right now, they doing it. And you see people change all the time. Like my style never changed. Like you never see me in a bit, like you never see me in these waves. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I make music. That's how I think. Like I'm 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 what you see is what it is. Like anybody that knew me from then, it's the same nigga. Like it's not different. You never gonna you never gonna see me doing something that ain't me. Like yeah. I, I'm the wave. Right. Now that's dope. I appreciate that. Um, and just to your point, like with the production and not needing to chase waves, like I mean, that's something that completely different music. But we seen that when you got the Go Go influence of Anne Marie's joint, and then that gets sampled for Beyonce's "Crazy in Love." Like "Crazy in Love" isn't considered a Go Go song; it's a song. You know what I'm saying? And like the song with you and Mario is not necessarily Afro beast joint, but it's something that I think is flexible, and y'all could get play with that from wherever in the club to like Ibiza, you know what I'm saying? So um, it is dope that you're able to take different elements of other sounds and still make it sound natural um, and not like you're chasing a trend. So congrats on that. And yo, if you're hitting the road anytime soon, man, let us know. Where you at? I'm down Mexico City. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of stuff going on down here, but I mean, I, we, we're all located all over the States and North America, but no, happy to support and just happy that you're on the call for real and uh, sharing sharing everything with us. It was good talking to you. Much love. No, no doubt, no doubt. Court man, want to thank you again tapping in, bringing the bang on man, bang the desk. Like I said, just crazy resume. Uh, like I said, I love the energy, brother. You know what I mean? And and uh, I I hope you continue to sell that energy on these people. You know what I'm saying? Because they they need it in their life. We need it in this music game. You know what I mean? Like I said, uh, music just seems to get be getting depreciated, man. And I just love the fact that he. It, it means something more to you than just a check or a bag. You know what I'm saying? So you could tell, you could tell in, in what you put out, man. So thank you. I appreciate you. All right. So listen, the, I know you said the Mario record's not yours, but that other one, the Grammy joint. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. All right. It's, it's yours now. It's yours now. That's right. <laughs> we, finna, um, we finna, we finna get that mix and master. Let's get it. Let's to all the DJs cause they want it. That's what they yeah. want. No, that rack is high, bro. Have, like have I said, you I, heard I his new song? Mario's? Mario's? Yeah. No, no. Which one? Exactly. We front of we <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's not nah. that. Yeah, yeah. Trust right. me. Hey, well, shout out Des Moines, man. Shout out Des Moines, Iowa. You feel me? Uh <laughs> uh, uh Bangladesh and T Bar. The illest nigga in Des Moines. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, bless up to you, man. <laughs> like I said, I wish you the best for the rest of the year. Uh, top of the year, top of the year, dropping a project. Yep, yep. Okay, 
All right, we'll be looking my, for it for my, sure. My, no, the, the rap project I'm dropping in December. Oh, okay, work, work. You know. Well, Court, you know we here, man. Hey, Bring him back. Him. Bring him back. Let's run through some more records. Oh yeah, yeah. We gonna we got a we got we got we got a lot of we got a lot of work ahead of us, man. So you know, we're gonna end the year with the rap shit, and then we are gonna follow up the top of the year with the with the with the stuff that the youngins like, you know. And we are gonna keep it going, and then you know, everybody we gonna come into your marketplace soon, you know. We you gonna know, have that Mar. We gonna have that Mario next week for you. Yes. yes. Oh, see now yes. that's see, that's that's when you gonna have me in trouble. So that's what we doing. Next week. Let's get All in right, trouble. Let's get in trouble. Let's run get it in out. trouble. Let's that's it. Bangladesh records. You heard yeah. it first. So Mario, <laughs> Mario. <Hey. laughs> Who do you love? It's coming to love? next week. You got the fire started here. You know we gonna get it. We gonna get it started. Let's get it popping. Yeah, yeah. Well, the DJ's got your back, brother. So, like I said, let us know when that pack is available. We start spreading it like wildfire for sure. All right, thank you, thank you, man. Did you ask?